Hello, Pulp Hounds. So, Guyane Smith has never written a book that's changed my life. I've never bought an extra copy of one of his books so I can pass it on to somebody else because I want them to experience what I've just experienced. However, if I'm stuck for something to read or just don't know what I want to read, I always gravitate towards his books. If there's one that I come across in a second-hand bookshop or on a website that I haven't got, that's affordable, I will always buy it. So, how and why and who is Guyane Smith? Well, Smith doesn't fit the typical horror author. Not that there's a typical horror author mould. But Smith has always seen himself as a journalist. Uh, focusing on shooting, hunting, assorted countryside pursuits, and of course, pipe smoking. His, his dad was a bank manager. Uh, his mum was a novelist, E.M. Wheel. And... Do you know, all that doesn't equate to him being one of the most prolific pulp authors of the 20th century. It's really strange. If you haven't read any of Guyane Smith's books... Um, right, I say this with tremendous fondness for his work... And anything, any terms I use that, that like, formulaic or pulp or anything like that, you can see where this is going, can't you? They're meant in a tremendously affectionate way. Um, not derogatory in any way, shape or form. And I hope this video comes across like that and makes that point. So, Smith's books do follow a kind of formula. There's a threat, which is uh, usually a, quite a stereotypical horror trope, or what is popular in horror at the time it was written. So you get Nature Gone Wild, which is understandable, because he's a countryside -y kind of guy. You get monsters, you get werewolves, you get uh, crazed psychos, you get sinister cults. You, you even get one of Satan's bells that's when it's rung, it turns everybody into mad, cannibal, psychotic sex killers. I mean, this is kind of the level we're talking here. And I've been thinking about him because I've been re I've, during this second lockdown. I've been reading a load of Guy and Smith books, and it's kind of like this countryside gentleman. How how did that all come about? What's what's going on? I mean, Guy and Smith didn't just write horror. His main he's best known for his horror. Um, I mean, he wrote. It, it, it says he wrote, he's written about 3,000 articles for countryside journals. Um, he is the, uh, like the shooting sports editor for Countryman's Weekly. And a thoroughly enthusiastic pipe smoker. He is that countryside gentleman. Um, he's written... So, other than horror, he's written westerns, he's written novelizations of, like, he's done the adaptations of Disney films. Yes, you hear that? He wrote the adaptations of Disney films. I think to really get 
where Guy Smith is coming from, you need to look at interviews. Because um, a lot of people are really interested in the same things that I am. How did this English gentle chap just keep churning out bonkers and insane and ridiculous and violent and spicy pulp, short pulpy paperbacks that's what he's most famous for so in an interview on uh, monsterlibrarian.com I'm not going to read a load of interviewee things this is just a little a little bit when Guy Smith is asked um, what his influences are and he says, I've read much of the classic horror, Lovecraft, Stoker, etc. I have my own collection of weird tales. If I read any horror now, it's usually pre-1960. Later on in the interview. Pulp fiction is the most fun to write. I often think that I was born too late. I could have had a field day in the many pulps of the 30s. And that, for me, is where it all just fits together. I'm a big fan of 30s and 40s pulps. And they were written... This is a, a pre-television age. So you had the radio, you had things to read. They were your, they were your primary sources of entertainment. And I know a vast amount of horror authors that I respect or know they write for entertainment, they write to entertain people. But Guy N. Smith obviously loved that that ethos of just churn them out, just, ch just get them out there. And this all kind of fits together for me as a Guy N. Smith fan and a kind of 30s and 40s pulp fan. You know, I think it, it happened in the to, towards the end of the 80s into the early 90s. We got the bigger horror novel. That's when it became really kind of popular. Lots of backstory, lots of fleshing out the characters. So you empathise with that character. You understand when they're in a horrific situation you know all about their life and you're with them there in that moment. And that's brilliant. And I, I do love that. But sometimes there's a need for something short, something yet yeah, you've got your tough male hero who is a male archetype, therefore doesn't need any fleshing out. Because you can imagine him as... Doug McClure or some, someone like that. Do you know the kind of just like, yeah, I am that guy. Often they smoke a pipe, of course. <laughs> and that, that means that work's already done for you. And you find in a lot of the pulps and cheap, trashy novels from the 30s and 40s that archetypes are just totally... You know, it saves, they're there, they're used. It saves so much time, it saves so much setup. You don't need to do a 700 page novel about and, and detail all their childhood because you know who this person is just by their archetype. Guy and Smith didn't set out to be a horror writer. Um, he wrote a lot of science fiction stories when he was younger that he sold to science fiction magazines. Again, this is kind of how much he loves the pulp thing. And then in 1974, New English Library commissioned him to write Werewolf by Moonlight because they wanted a werewolf novel. And it was mediumly popular. Uh, and they kept him on as an author. And then in 1976, when the whole... Jaws, things coming out of the sea and eating us type boom was happening. He came up with Night of the Crabs, which is still one of his most, I think, one of his most famous and most fondly remembered novels. The Crab series is one of my favourites 
uh, out of not just not just Guy and Smith's work, out of all of horror, the Crab series. Yeah, I know, and I've said before in a video that I remember my dad reading them and my mum forbidding me from looking at them when he left them on the kitchen table because they were disgusting. But they are just so much fun. The, the, yeah, they always find a, a an inland waterway or canal or fjord or something that's going to let them uh, kind of get onto dry land and find soft, tender human flesh to gorge themselves on. So Night of the Crabs was so popular, it gave him uh, enough recognition and enough uh, financial income just to focus on writing, just to become a full-time writer. And he, so he kind of fell into that horror uh, genre just as a way of keeping that going, of making money, of feeding his family. He just seemed to be incredibly good or incredibly dreadful at it, depending on what your perception of what horror should or could be. If, if I've piqued your interest and you're thinking, do you know what, I'm going to check this guy out. There are much more violent books available nowadays. There are, much, uh, there are books with spicy moments that are far less clumsily written than Mr. Smith wrote, as much as I adore him. His smut was clumsy. His books are almost like B-movies, kind of forgotten VHS tapes that you rented once 30 years ago and watched and it was bonkers. But give him a go, because he's this odd conduit between a wonderful era of pulps and a wonderful era of especially 70s bizarre trash fiction. I hope I, hope I haven't been derogatory to Guy N. Smith. And I hope nobody thinks that. Because I genuinely adore his books. They're, yes, they follow, a lot of them follow the same structure, but what's wrong with that? How many, how many Fast and the Furious movies follow the same structure or whatever you enjoy, video games a lot follow the same narrative structure? There's nothing wrong with something familiar and there's nothing wrong with something bonkers and there's nothing wrong with something violent. His books aren't horrific. They're not... They're horror books. But you're not going to get chills. You're not going to get... The feeling of being horrified, I don't think. They are just entertainment. Just taking that... That ethos of the original pulps. I guess even back to the Penny Dreadfuls and Varney the Vampire. Just just taking a whole bunch of stuff, squishing it together and telling a, an entertaining and frenetic story that constantly runs at fever pitch with ideas so outrageous and bizarre, sometimes genuinely they make you laugh. Just as a B-movie can sometimes. You're watching it thinking, I can't believe that this is unfolding in front of me. So, yeah, give him a go. If you fancy something different, if you fancy an easy read that you're going to get through in a couple of nights, go for it. What have you got to lose? It sold so many books. They're so available online and stuff. It's going to cost you a couple of quid. Have a go. Read the wood. That one was bonkers. <laughs> That's just like everything. And you see reading it kind of going, hang on, guy, give us a minute. I've just got my head around these like time traveling Nazi ghosts. And now we've got like zombie smugglers from beyond the grave. And it's all way. They are chaos and crazy and 
sometimes almost like a stream of consciousness, like you're trying to describe a dream to someone. And as you're describing that dream, even more bits of it pop into your memory. And that <laughs> is why I love Guy and Smith. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. And I will see you, good folks, in the next video.